Morning, everybody. Um, my name is Carl. I'll be chairing today's meeting. Welcome. Um, we are expecting uh, quite a bit more guys that have registered for today's meeting. So I'm going to give the guys that have registered just a few more minutes. Uh, I know we're supposed to start at 10. Um, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes and then we'll start the meeting. Uh, so if you if we could just bear with the other guys busy signing in. There are a couple of issues with regards to registering. So it's possible, or once you've clicked the button, you've got to register before you can uh, log in. So let's just give some of the guys who weren't familiar with the process just a couple of minutes. Okay, good morning, guys. Um, I see it's four past 10. I think we should get started. There were quite a few more guys who actually registered for the meeting, uh, but I think we need to get cracking. It's possible that some of them are in other meetings and they are probably relying on the fact that there will be a recording done of this meeting. Um, I, for some reason or the other, have uh, issues with uh, bandwidth. So in the interest of bandwidth, I'm just going to leave my uh, camera off 
and I'm kind of holding my fingers crossed that the uh, the meeting will continue uh, with the bandwidth that we've got available. Uh, I see everybody else's the cameras are off as well, so so it's great if we can conserve a little bit of bandwidth. That's uh, that's great. Uh, good morning and welcome. This is the distributors steering committee meeting. So for those of you that logged in and are joining, it's important to understand that this meeting is specifically geared towards distributors. We do have another Arab members meeting, which is on Thursday. Um, let me just check. I'm sure it was on Thursday. Uh, Arab monthly members meeting uh, at 11 o'clock on Thursday morning. We also have an Arabs um, uh, test steering committee, which is later today, uh, which is later today. So those of you that have an interest in, uh, in joining some of the other meetings, uh, you are welcome to do so. Um, okay. Uh, good morning, guys. I see Sebastian has said hello, as well as uh, Richard. Um, Marisha, will you uh, send links to those other meetings? Thank you very much. Uh, guys, so, so this particular steering committee was created specifically for distributors. It was quite created uh, quite a couple of months ago, and, and the the reason for creating it was to, to have, um, I don't know, discussions with distributors, for distributors to have a forum where they can share concerns, where they can discuss issues, and where they could um, almost communicate with, with the broader industry as, as a cohesive I don't know, I don't want to call it a body, but just to be able to communicate with a broader industry. What we, um, we have uh, an extremely dynamic sector and an extremely dynamic industry. And it's either, uh, it either operates at 160 kilometers per hour, it's standing completely still. There are, there are no in-between. So you're either uh, overthrown with work or, or there are no inquiries uh, or quotes going out at all. So even for distributors, this has a massive impact on, on how you do stock holding, how, who do you cater for, what's your market, um, and not to mention all of the other things, all of the other challenges you have in, in being part of a distribution network, uh, buying and selling stock and buying and selling equipment. So that was the purpose. I'm going to share my screen quickly. That was the purpose of the meeting. I'm going to share my screen uh, so that we can just have a look. I've got an agenda here. Let me just get rid of that call. Uh, I just need to find the document we covered. It's not that one. Here we are. Guys, you should be able to see my screen. Um, that's the agenda for the meeting. Uh, depending on the interaction with uh, the guys in the audience, the interaction will, to a certain extent, determine the duration of the meeting. At the moment, it's it's booked for for about an hour, so I'm going to do my level best to to stay within the limitations of the meeting. Um, uh, a quick welcome. I think I've I've done that. My name is Carl Balak. Um, I am involved with the Association for Renewable Energy Practitioners in that I oversee operations. Uh, Arup is uh, the largest solar industry body in South Africa. Uh, there are a number of industry bodies uh, when we look at electricity per se. So we would look at uh, industry bodies like the ECA or the ECB, SAFIA, 
uh, we have CESA, and then there are a, a couple of other organizations that, that we need to be aware of. The organization that you should join uh, should theoretically be the organization that provides you with, uh, with value. And, and different, different businesses are going to get value out of different organizations. So you, you don't have to belong to, to one organization and you definitely don't have to belong to all of them. A uh, big organization that uh, provides value for what it is you are involved with and, and become actively involved with, with that in. It says my my internet connection is unstable, so I hope you guys can hear me. Please let me know if you if you can't. Then I'll try and move around and see whether I can can improve the reception. It is quite clear. Uh, all the quality. Thank you very much. Uh, at the moment, all good. Thanks, Ian. So, guys, we've. <laughs> As a, as a collective, in the first couple of months, we've identified different distributors by looking at the size of the distributor. There, there is a group of about, I think it's about 12 distributors that are currently that currently form the core of, of what we've identified to be a tier one distributor. And, and uh, I think in order to define a tier one distributor, we allocated a specific uh, turnover per annum. Uh, that was the one criteria. And the other criteria was that they needed to have multiple products. They needed to be the sole distributor for uh, a multiple uh, brand, multiple brands and multiple ranges of products. So if if you if you bring in only solar panels, if you import only solar panels into the country, you can't be a tier one distributor. Um, if you bring solar panels into the country and you sell them to to installers, you would probably classify under a tier two distributor. So the idea would be to uh, to start talking to all of the distributors and then define when we have a meeting with the tier two distributors, what the limitation for tier two distributors are. And then if, if, it's, if it's deemed necessary, we will have another category for tier three distributors, for example. Now, what we've done in, in the first couple of meetings was we've identified, and I'm, I'm just going to look at this document where I am over here at the agenda. We, we looked at a, a number of things, for example, risks of doing business, costs associated with doing business. And these, these risks and costs are, are strictly from a distribution point of view. So it's not for installations. Uh, it has to do with the, the buying, selling, and distribution of solar equipment, whether, whether it's one item or a range of items. Uh, you obviously need to have a premises, but what we are looking at here is, first of all, risks of doing business, costs, associate, costs associated with doing business, um, uh, standards of installations and limitations of supply. This was, as far as I'm concerned, the most pressing points in the discussions with, that we've had with uh, tier one distributors' risks. I think probably the biggest the biggest risk would be uh, theft and scams, uh, guys. Obviously, there are a number of risks, but we can't in a meeting like this list all of the risks and discuss all of them. So I picked all the what I considered to be the most prominent uh, items up for discussion. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've had a number of guys who said to me that they were planning on opening up shops, and and as soon as you start talking about theft and scams, uh, it, it kind of acts as a deterrent for guys wanting to start up uh, a distribution business because they're not aware of, of the volume 
of of thefts and and hijackings and scams going on in in the solar PV industry. So this is something that we that we could spend a bit of time on. I just want to see there was a message coming in. A business would qualify. Oh, thank you very much. A uh, business would qualify as tier one distributor if it offers a range of products. Um, in other words, a complete offering. If it offers product and installation training on their products, directly or indirectly. If it has distribution rights for a specific product and takes full responsibility for a complete range of products, okay, uh, including offering internal support, the solar modules are excluded as a distribution product. And then it also says meets the following business size requirements. So it needs to have at least five technical support staff, five sales support staff, minimum of three outlets. If a distributor has one outlet but meets all the other criteria, they may be included in the Steercom Management Committee and then a minimum annual revenue of 500 million rand. Now, what is, what is interesting is, is last year, in the middle of the year, the, the turnover, well, the sales basically stopped in the middle of the year for the residential sector. So it would be interesting to see whether whether the guys that just met this criteria is now falling short. So that would be interesting. And then has actively participated in the, in the market for a minimum of four years. So you can't just cash in a pension and then become part of the industry um, as in place. An EPR compliance solution, which kind of leads into leads us into the next topic guys something that not a lot of businesses especially distributors are aware of is that there is something like an epr tax or an epr fee epr is uh, is short for extended producer responsibility taxes or fees and and an epr fee is effectively if I could say it's it's almost like a recycling fee, so it's it's supposed to make sure that your responsibilities with regards to recycling is met, and that there is money, whether it's going to be used for that or not, that there is money available to be able to take care of um, a recycling. Uh, uh, equipment at the end of its life. That is what the that is what the EPR taxes or fees are for. So a lot of guys importing equipment is not aware of this, and and this actually forms a significant portion of of the of the cost or the value when goods are resold. So it's important to be aware of this. I think we had an EPR meeting and presentation. Marisha, just remind me quickly. It wasn't last. Was it last month or the month before it? That the that meeting video, that meeting link would be accessible. There we go. It was done in January, so you guys should be able to access it. Yeah, it was um, like, uh, Coral. Sorry, it was two months ago. It was two months. Yes. Thank you very much. So we will get the link. Okay. So Maria says it'll be available on our YouTube channel soon. So that's great. Um, other thing we discussed was uh, standards of installations. So, so if you are a distributor, is it possible for you to, to manage the standard of installations? Standard of installations and limit of supply. Do you supply equipment to every guy that walks in? And I suppose depending on where your store is and the kind of market that you supply, limit the supply of goods to only installers or a select group of installers, or you would... Um, make it available to everybody but there has to be there has to be some sort of responsibility with regards to 
uh, standard of installations and limitation of supply without necessarily monopolizing the market. Um, Coral? Yes. Uh, on that point, and I think it's also, you know, it forms a sort of a part of, of the risk of doing business. Um, I've got a document that I had Bowman's uh, compile for us. Um, it is, a let's say, a short form note on the Consumer Protection Act. Um, with regards to installers specifically and what kind of, uh, you know, when they fall within, when they don't fall within. I mean, because a lot of guys only think that a consumer is, you know, a natural person, juristic uh, entity with an annual turnover of less than 2 million. So in other words, the end user falls inside there. But, you know, once you do uh, that end user is a business and they do over 2 million revenue, they fall outside of the CPA and and all of that. But, you know, it doesn't just stop there. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Stop, 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 stop. Wait, you're going too fast. You're going too fast. Just say that again. So, okay. Again? So the consumer, Something about 2 million or what's the 2 the million? The Consumer Protection Act basically states that, you know, consumer has the right for a full refund or repair or anything like that on a product. And, and a lot of a lot of the yes. installers, the clients that they deal with fall inside the Consumer Act. So in other words, the installation of under under 2 million Rand would automatically make them fall within the Consumer Protection Act. What basically okay. now, now happens is sometimes they deal with a business and then this business revenue is over 2 million and then you, you are outside of, or they assume that you are outside of the Consumer Protection Act should something go wrong. But it doesn't just stop there. So basically what happens is even us as the distributor can fall within a claim of the Consumer Protection Act should an installer do a poor installation at a customer's house. In other words, should something go okay. wrong or any damage occur or his house burn down, what happens is everybody in the supply chain can be held liable. So should the installer or whoever bought the product from you do the installation wrong and the house burns down, they can lodge a claim with the Consumer Protection Act, with the Consumer Council. Then what happens is they will then look at it. But then if you were recklessly trading and not, you know, selling to a qualified person or making sure that that person is trained to do the installation or knowingly supply to him, knowing that he's going to do a self-install, you then form part of the claim. Then the, the manufacturer, so let's say for argument's sake, let's talk about um, solar edge for, for argument's sake. If, if something would happen on a solar edge installation and us being a solar edge importer, we would then, you know, form the first, uh, the, the installer would be the first plaintiff, uh, uh, and and a uh, um, uh, uh, guy that gets taken on, then it moves up in the chain. Then it goes to me. If then res resolution cannot be found from us, they can even go as far as going to Soleil head office in Israel. So um, basically saying that the distribution agreement that you have with them is that they should be able to tell people to train. So if I or tell people how to use it and train them how to use it. So if I trade recklessly, even my supplier, I'm in breach, even if I'm not in breach of his contract, if they appoint me as a distributor and we are trading recklessly, they also can be taken on through the Consumer Act. So I've got like a short form, let's call it cheat sheet um, that Bowman's compiled for me out of the entire Consumer Act. The cheat sheet is roughly about, um, I've got it, it's at six pages long and I will share this with you. Look, it's it's completely private and confidential. Um, but this is the type of thing that I could share with you and I share actually with my clients so that they can see where they need to look at for risks when they are doing an installation and also where they expose their supplier to these risks if they don't do it correctly. So um, I think this is something that could have a lot of value for the people in this meeting. And I think maybe if you can just, I'll, I'll forward it to you and then you can read through it and look at it, but then see what kind of risks there are, even for us as, as distributors. 
So trading recklessly um, does expose you uh, to claims if the installation is done wrong. Wow. Okay. That kind of takes, um, takes responsibility to another level. It does. And that is, that is actually, unfortunately, how the South African law has been written. So the thing is, is people Google the Consumer Protection Act and they read the first part of it. And then they look at that 2 million. Oh, no, I'm covered because, you know, I don't fall in Consumer Protection Act with my customer because he spends more than 2 million rand a year with me. So we are outside of that. But it's not really that. It's about the people that he deals with and how he does. And then, you know, there's a lot of subsections under the Consumer Protection Act that actually covers things like um, doing the installation correctly, you know, risks involved with it. And, you know, especially when you're importing, let's call it a, 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 a basic um, um, uh, battery, but you did not make sure that it's got the relevant uh, certifications and it does catch fire. You know, you as the importer can be held liable and then they can go go uh, up up to to that um i see richard is asking something about about the uh, the link to cpa and popion no so you see that what happens is the government has, then has jurisdiction so in other words through the cpa it will go up into the supply chain so it's uh, it's uh, you you can't hide behind the poppy act by not disclosing your supplier um of the product you have to disclose it because they they come through the consumer act so yeah it's quite a quite a quite a lengthy and 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 encumbersome um uh act if you talk about the consumer protection act so you know just as a as a fair warning to all distributors is you need to have it in the back of your head that when you are trading recklessly um, by selling to anybody, then you do suspect that there's a risk of self-installation and potential risks involved with the houses burning down, especially with, you know, subpar lithium batteries. Um, you can sit with a potential big lawsuit on you. And it's not just about the house that burns down and you have to cover the house is burning down. It's about they will come off to you with fines and even jail time for trading recklessly. I'm, while I've got you, I, I don't know if there's anybody else that wants to ask a question, but while I've got you on um, with your microphone on, mm -hmm. your so you've you've touched on the risks as far as as standard of installations and maybe quality of product is is concerned when we looked at things like theft and scams um do you have anything that you can add there uh yeah so i mean i've got examples of scams i get about five a day um coming through our business so there's multiple multiple ways of scams being done um i can tell you that you know there's the the old originals where you know people submit um fake inquiries um you know from government institutions or things like that and then people think oh this is a nice thing but we you can quote on it the issue with the government order they come and fetch the goods and then there's no payment the other one is they they ask for a specific product that specific product once you search for it online will only end up with you know, there's one supplier for it. What will then happen is you'll get you'll get a legit purchase order for that product. And then you will go and buy that product. But once you pay for that product, it just never gets delivered. So in other words, they scam you on the supply side, not on the distribution side. Um, one that we've recently seen that's been sticking its head out quite, quite, um, you know, often um, is uh, phishing scams where uh, people in your organization, their email account gets hacked. And then what happens is they start intercepting it. So um, we actually use a, a, a company that scraps the dark web for any exposure on email accounts for ourselves and for our customers. 
So we've recently recently had a customer that's been targeted about payments and and all of these things, and it looks like it's actually coming from our from our financial department. And what actually happened is their their email accounts were hacked. So in other words, every time a statement or an invoice or anything goes out to them, somebody intercepts it. And then what they do is they change the payment details on these invoices and then and then you know resend it out. And then wow. people end up putting money into the wrong accounts and all of these things. So there's there's I mean, you know, we've got endless, endless amounts of of scams that that are that are being uh you know, tried day in, day out. Um, you know, our IT department is quite hefty. Um, they, it costs a lot of money. And I know it's not for everybody to be able to to spend these kinds of costs. I mean, just to monitor customer email addresses that might have been uh, compromised on the dark web for us as a 2 million rand a year exercise, you know, to, to scrub all our customers' uh, accounts on a yearly basis. Um, so, so it's, it's, re they're really getting good, but they, it's, it's really becoming more and more and more evident. Then obviously the robberies are, uh, a massive thing. Um, there's always constant robberies for people with solar equipment. I mean, last week we had a container of inverters incoming, the truck broke down, they opened up the truck, they stole 30 inverters out of the back of the container before it even got to us. Um, mm -hmm. The the guys are tracking these vehicles. They are, you know, hijacking them. They are buying them. I actually wish they would have just hijacked all my solar modules last year. Um, <laughs> that we didn't end up with all the high cost modules that landed. But <laughs> unfortunately, those ones didn't get hijacked. But yes, it's it's a very big risk with regards to hijacking and robberies and all of that. Um, I know uh, I don't see anybody, uh, uh, Greg or Nick here. Um, I don't know, I don't seem to see Sabine here, but I mean, a lot of us have, have gone under this this whole robbery thing. It's a real bad thing. We're on a, in a working group where we've got a few guys that are involved in WhatsApp and there's the private investigators are every day finding new product that has been stolen or hijacked or robbed from somebody. Um, wow. So I think this is that, that uh, working group or that private investigator that works on that uh, he specifically specializes in solar industry theft. So maybe it's something where we can maybe get him to tie up with you and send it out so that you can then distribute to the members if somebody get robbed. Because obviously we only see if it's product that's from us that's been hijacked. But um, lately we've seen a product from, you know, five star inverters, a lot of product that, that has come up. So, um, I mean, that can be something that industry can benefit from. Then the yeah. other, thing, you know, substandard product. Um, you know, uh, South Africa is unfortunately doesn't have very strong policing at the the borders or at the ports. So uh, South Africa has become sort of a dumping ground for subpar Chinese products. And you know, you get LinkedIn requests on a daily basis for people that want to sell you something. Um, from my side, I can just say is. If you, if you are looking at importing a product or bringing it to the country, to be on the safe side, rather just make sure that it's got the European and US standards when it comes to, to um, certifications. Um, things like UL uh, 1945A, um, things like the IEC test certificates, all of those things. Because, you know, even though South Africa doesn't require an UL 954A um, certification yet, at least it means that your product won't won't catch fire um, uh, because it's been tested for that. So, you know, de-risking yourself by making sure that you you don't just bring a battery as a battery as a battery, an inverter as an inverter as an inverter, but you actually ask your supplier that you are looking for these various certifications before you bring it in because then, then they don't change the components on the inside. Because I don't don't know if everybody knows the 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 story about you know when you buy, want to buy buy a pen from China, you know there's this this joke going around where somebody would say oh I want to buy a, a, a whole lot of big pens, and the Chinese guy says okay well it's one dollar for for a pen and he says no but I only want to pay fifty cents and he says sure no problem, 
And then when the shipment arrives, there's no ink inside the pen. So he says, well, why is there no ink? No, no, pen with ink is $1. Pen without ink is 50 cents. So, and that is the core thing about what happens is when you start negotiating with these guys down on price, they will never say no. But what they'll do is they'll reduce the quality. They'll go from tier one to tier three cells. They'll go to C-grade products. They'll go buy all the rejects off the production line. And then you bring that in and then it blows up or it burns and well, something happens. And then at the end of the day, you can be out liable for it. So by asking for certain certifications, you make sure that it's only A-grade production ready products, uh, cells and components that go into that and not the regions. And that's excellent. Thank you very much. I see Richard asked a question about one product. I don't remember what that product was, Richard, or you, or even if I answered the question. Uh, on no. you. Yeah, I can elaborate if you want. Yeah, Thank sure. You. Yeah, and because you, you mentioned that uh, the products were getting uh, stolen, but is, is it one product or is it uh, many? No, oh, it, it's products. multitudes of products. Um, everything and anything. Yeah, everything and anything. Um, I can it's just inverters. Uh, yeah, inverters, batteries. batteries, panels, all sorts of things. So um, just to give you an idea, um, um, I can so the the last batch was that was in energy um batteries that were that came up ja solar panels um this was green deer batteries um green deer inverters um uh, 15 millimeter what what is this this is 200 meter roll of of copper wire um here we have solar wise inverters um a pss inverters pss batteries um longi panels um mm, oh, let me go back here well uh, fine it sounds like there's a lot of products being recovered because i think yeah, there is like a lot of products really being recovered the problem is is they go into police booking uh once they're recovered and if nobody claims them obviously no so here's some victron color controllers victron mppts yeah, some SunGrow inverters, SunGrow batteries. Um, what is this product? This is uh, Freedom One E towers. Um, and this was SunSync products. This was LB where do you top. get where do you get that list from? I get it from no. So the investigator once he does a recovery, he he sends it to uh, our, uh, our group. Okay. So I understand. this one was MTN uh, Shisha batteries. So a cell phone tower batteries, LV Top Sun products, um, Daya inverters. Oh, well, that's, oh, that's that's why I was asking, Han, because a lot of these um, inverters have got apps. Yeah. And those those apps, I mean, once it's triggered, then, you know, it's, it's got GIS location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, yes, Dynes batteries, um, Dynes uh what is shoto yeah we found a list of huawei products um triple power hubble a canadian solar daya uh, sanova solar panels yingli panels um whole and i'm talking about warehouses full of stock revolve batteries um so it's everything and anything that gets stolen but it gets recovered five star inverters five star panels um you know, so so there's a lot of a lot of product that actually is being recovered through through these these entities. So Carl, I think maybe maybe the good thing or what we can do is just add Arab to that. So that I mean, you've got a much bigger lead because I can see from this is when these recoveries happen, ninety percent of the people on the group say not ours, but it might be somebody on on this call's product that that is that is being recovered. So. You know, somebody went through a robbery and then their products get recovered because they all have cereals on them. Uh, thank you very much, Ayn. That's very useful. The The Bowman's report that you have is mm. Bowman's. What kind of company is Bowman's? What do they do? Well, the biggest law firm in South Africa. 
Okay, so Bowman's is a law firm, and they I I did actually get a report. Someone circulated a report or sent a report through to me, but that was something about hybrid. Mm. Uh, I think the topic of the report was hybrid. This, something. This one is purely from from Bowman's from a legal perspective, and what okay. you know what you need to watch out for on the Consumer Protection Act. So, I've just forwarded to you now, Coral. Okay. That's but great. Can, Thank you very much. You can have a, have a look at that and just, you know, have a read through it and see actually where the exposure is on the Consumer yeah. Protection Act as well. And we had more than a, a hundred guys who actually registered for this meeting. Is it possible for us to circulate that document in a link to all the guys who registered or would you like to limit distribution? Oh, I'll just send it to you first, then you can read through it and then maybe okay. just you know, compile like a short and look, it is a, it is a, 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 a deep dive that we had done. Uh, we okay. actually paid a lot of money for it. It was like 160,000 Rand to have that compiled for us. Um, okay. We share it with yeah. our clients, um, you know, to help them. But I mean, maybe this is, you can just take what is relevant to the distributors and then I... maybe take some that is relevant to the installers and maybe just, notify the installers at Arab about this. I mean, I don't mind, I'm, an, I'm a founding member for Arab, but uh, I just don't want, you, you know, I just don't want it to be circulated everywhere, you know, so no, fair um, enough. Something from Arab circulated because it is a confidential document. So we can summarize the mm. content, take out the yes. uh, appropriate. Um, appropriate information and right. compile that into a separate document. Correct. Thank you very much for clarifying that. We'll make sure that that's, that's how it's done. I see uh, Jocelyn says, is there a place that suppliers and distributors can check serial numbers on products to check if it's stolen? So if, yes. uh, if a tier two distributor, for example, buys some equipment from someone else, how do they know if it's stolen? Well, uh, um, we, we, you can check with us on the products that we import. So um, that is one of the things that, that, that we do. So if any of my, let's call it on Sunsync, sub-distributors has a shipment stolen, they send me a list of the serial numbers. And then what, are, what we do is, is we keep track of those serial numbers should anybody inquire with them. The, the sad part is, is if you buy it and you sell it to somebody, once it goes online, it gets locked. So in other words, when the inverter switches online, it will get locked. So your customer will come back to you for a refund. Um, we've had quite a few guys that were selling stolen goods and they opted to not pay for them and just give the customer new ones. So, I mean, those inverters are lying dead dormant somewhere. Wow. Um, where we could have actually, you know, if they were willing to pay the cost for them, we could have, could have opened them up. But yeah. Um, I mean, there's not a place for every product to be checked. You can check on 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 uh, with the suppliers. Yeah. So Sebastian also said the fake or gray modules in the market. Uh, Sebastian at the solo show, I actually had a meeting with JA and with uh, Canadian. So Canadian Solar is rolling out a, a serial number checker per region, and JA will be doing that as well. Um, okay. So in other words, what happens is right now you've got the global serial number check tracker to check if it's fake. But if even if you if you punch in the serial number, it will show you tell you yes has been made by JA. But what they are doing now is they're taking it one step further. It was made by Canadian or JA, destined for African or European or Asian market. So if if it if it gives you uh, if you punch in a serial number that is not meant for the African market. It will show you that there's no warranty on the product. If it was meant for the African market, then it'll it'll approve the serial number. So, in other words, you're gonna the gray imports will stop um, uh, eventually. Um, I think it'll take some time, but there are at least two suppliers that are that are doing a lot of effort on not having gray products in the market and um, rolling out this serial number tracker per region uh, uh, program. And then obviously the fakes um, they are dealing with, um, I know the Canadian has, has uh, actually 
there was a police thing where they found somebody that was importing modules from China and printing Canadian labels and sticking them on the back of them and selling them. Um, uh, so that has all been confiscated, all, all of those products. And there is a big police case on with that at the moment. Yeah, okay. I see. I see Sebastian. No, no, no. I just see Sebastian saying there's the additional issue of fake or grain modules, which you've just addressed with the stickers. No, I said and... I just just answered him on that now. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that is excellent. Thank you very much for your input. As far as the investigator is concerned, would would we be able to contact him and maybe get some sure. more information on? On just I'll, the type I'll, of I will process. send I will send you his number and then you can just contact him directly saying that I put you in touch with him and maybe he can create like a WhatsApp group with all the Arab members and just as as uh, you know where they where, when they do it because WhatsApp is a lot easier for them because as soon as they as soon as they you know hit the warehouses where the stolen goods are they take photos immediately they post it. And if somebody claims ownership of them, you ask to, you know, give, provide the police case and the serial numbers yeah. and then you get to recover your, your goods. They do charge a fee on recovery because obviously he works for himself. Um, yes. The rate that we we are currently paying is 5% of the value of the goods. Um, okay. But I mean, I don't, I don't mind paying 5% of the value of the goods. I mean, we had a... The, we had massive successes with these guys. We were hit for about 15 million rands worth of stock and they recovered 10 million rands worth of stock. Insurance paid the balance. Um, and I only had to pay 5% on the recovered goods, which was great to get your stock back. Yes, I understand. Okay, I actually think that'll be a great value add to be mm -hmm. able to have that. Well, and I think maybe you just have a discussion with him on how to do it because... Yes. Uh, you know, you don't want to end up having like this super crowded, you know, crazy. No, I understand. Um, yes. But just a way to, to do it. So I'm sharing his contact details with you now. That's 100%. Thank you very much. Guys, we've had a uh, good interaction. I think what uh, Mariesha will do, let's just have a look at the agenda quickly. Um, I think we've had uh, a healthy number of of discussions and comments and i the the next item on the agenda is just the way forward uh, i think what we'll do is we will contact and when i say we um i mean um jocelyn mariasha and Anne will be contacting the guys who have registered for the meeting and just have a discussion with them see where they fall in the supply chain and then see what we can, we as Arab can do to uh, to keep the traction going. Um, uh, Carl, I think I think one of the things that were also discussed on the the um, let's call it tier one uh, meeting was um, we we would maybe host like a panel discussion or webinar um, yes. with with um, you know various guys that have been in here, I mean, Oren has got a lot of input. I mean, they've been in distribution for many years, even before solar, um, the same with us, the same with, with um, uh, Nick and, and Greg. And, and maybe just, you know, where we can share um, with the guys, you know, um, how would I say lessons we've learned, school fees we've paid, and, and um, sort of just, you know, over, overall general discussion on how to get entry into the market and differentiating yourself maybe rather than than just just you know shifting boxes for a profit and then end up losing your business because things go wrong so i mean sebastian's been in distribution for quite some time i mean he's also had uh, uh you know his fair share of of lessons learned i think just you know not not sharing sharing secrets and 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 recipes for success. I'm talking about just a overall webinar for for people to learn from, and and to help them grow their business and do it in a sustainable way. Yeah, thank you very much. We had uh, I think uh, Marisha indicated we had 158 registrations for this meeting. Now, normally you could expect about a 50 percent a no show rate but we've we've had a significant number of guys not signing in so 
I think what we need to do is is your last comment, get share that comment with the guys that didn't sign in and see if we can identify a date where we where we have a slightly more in-depth discussion on uh, what you meant. I think I gave it a topic of getting an entry into the market and lessons learned uh, for distributors. So that would be the way forward. Uh, just want to finish typing that. Lessons learned for distributors. And then, uh, thank you very much, Ryan. And then we'll just get Mariusha to identify a new date for the next meeting. Uh, Mariusha, are you there? Or are you just going to type? I know you in a... I'm here. Would no, you be... Oh, well, and I think a good way to have that is not to just schedule a meeting with, you know, people coming in and having a random topic to discuss, but, you know, rather have people submit uh, questions in advance and, yes. and and then having a panel of distributors, you know, like taking up these questions because, I mean, I can do a, our PowerPoint presentation or whatever it is, but it might not it might not be what everybody wants to see. And I think that's also why you miss out on a lot of people coming in because, you know, it's not relevant to them. But when they submit these questions relevant to them and then they see that the questions will be answered on these meetings, the, the you know, participation, would I say, would be a lot more relevant. Um, we've seen that with customer webinars where you host a webinar on a certain topic and nobody pitches. But when you ask them for topics to be discussed, and they send it through, and then you start doing these topic discussions. We end up with three hundred people in the in the webinar. So it's really nice. And and I think if there's something that anybody wants to know, whether it be regarding you know risks, uh, uh, all the struggles and um, theft or scams or any of these things that we've all dealt with, um, you know, or subpar product or NRCS or any of these kinds of issues, having containers confiscated due to NRCS. Um, having you know, see, pitch up at your shop, and you know, taking a lot of goods off the off the shelf because of some technicality. You know, it's all of these kinds of things that I think a lot of a lot of the newer guys or the smaller distributors, you know, actually need to know about because you, you don't think that it's something until that day they come knocking and it becomes a real big problem for you. Wow, I didn't think that they actually do that. They do. Ask Oren. Okay. <laughs> lamp holders <laughs> lamp holders oh my goodness of all of all things okay uh, guys thank you very much I think that brings us to the end of the session uh, Maria Shah date uh, do we do we do uh, so we are going to have another Steercom meeting next month uh, I think it's the last Tuesday of the month and I think what we'll do, um, Hein, to add to your last comment was when Maria Ann and Jocelyn phone the guys that registered, they'll find out what the issue was with signing in, why they couldn't log in, and then also have a couple of get a couple of questions on on what could be addressed by uh, by the distributors at that uh, at that webinar. So th that'll be very nice. Thanks for that input. Um, guys, are there any last comments before we conclude the meeting? Uh, Maria Shah will be circulating. Um, Maria Shah will be circulating the date to all the guys who registered for this meeting. So, Maria Shah, do you have a date, or are you just going to circulate it? What's the last Tuesday? I think we should. Probably just discuss um, how we're going to do the meetings because we have the tier one distributors meeting on the last Tuesday of the month. So we'll see yeah. how we can incorporate the larger group. That's fine. Let's let's have a discussion with all the guys who registered first. Find out what the interests are. We do have some of the guys who've who've logged in today. Let's have a discussion with all of them and then see what we can do. Um, to service those guys in in future so 
This is a kind of a combined meeting with tier one and tier two guys. So the tier one guys will be again, uh, we'll, we'll have another meeting on the 30th of April at, at 10 a.m. That's uh, the last Tuesday of April. So I think as for the other guys, we will be contacting them and then, and then look at a way forward. Is that fine? That is perfect. Yes, let's do that. Okay. That's great. Guys, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for logging in. I hope you have managed to, to get some useful information out of the meeting. Um, the guys from Arab will be uh, contacting you to see how we can best service the, the other distributors in the, in the industry and uh, looking forward to having some more of you in the next meeting as well. Thank you very much, Ayn. Um, thanks for your input. And uh, guys, I think we are going to conclude the meeting. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.